Okay, so um, let's get started then. My name is Nigel uh, De Narona, and I'll be presenting with Placide today on um, this session, Data in the Spotlight, UK and Cross-National Surveys. So the, this is the first one. So I'm asking you, what are your research interests? I think you can put in up to three. Okay, so um, that's timed out now. So lots of um, different areas here. So social work and education seems to be the biggest, but um, there's stuff around the labour market, policy change, climate change, religion and ethnicity, ageing, um, crime, psychology, etc. I can't read all of them um, off that screen, but um, a broad range of interests. So now I'm going to hand over to Placide to present this part of the session. Thank you, Naja, for this introduction. Um, so in today's presentation, we will cover the following topics. Um, we aim to make an introduction to the UK data service and the wealth of data it offers. We will also present an overview of the survey data available for research and analysis. We'll talk about the documentation and tips to support your use of the data. And we will make a brief uh, website tool to familiarize you with key features. Now, as we go through these points, please uh, feel free to drop any questions in the Q&A box, and we will address them at the end of the session. Next. So what is the UK data service? It is a comprehensive uh, resource funded by the Economic and Social Research Council, the ESRC. It provides a single point of access to an extensive range of secondary social science data, allowing users to explore key social and economic uh, issues. Uh, additionally, the service also offers support, training, and guidance to help researchers, students, and policymakers make the most of this valuable data set. Next, what data do we hold? Uh, we hold a wide variety of data set. Um, we provide UK surveys, which cover many national, social, and economic topics. And these are essential for understanding uh, life in the UK. We also provide uh, census data, which give detailed information about the UK population. And uh, these are drawn from various census over time uh, for information, census are run or carried on every 10 years. And the latest uh, edition we have is the 2021-2022 uh, census. We provide longitudinal studies which follow individuals or household over long periods. And this help uh, researchers and um, uh, scientists to see how things change over time. Uh, for global comparison, we have international databases. These are useful for looking at data across different countries. We have business data focusing on industries and economic trends. These offer key insight into economy. We also provide qualitative data, which include interviews and case studies for more in-depth analysis. Um, next. Now let's uh, take a close look at UK surveys. These are surveys provided, um, uh, which provide detailed data about individuals and household and they are typically commissioned by 
government departments. We can uh, here we, we we just mention the Department for Business, Energy, and Industrial Strategy. Uh, other departments can commission uh, surveys too, and they are conducted by organizations such as the ONS and National Center for Social Research. The dataset collected from these surveys cover key characteristics and have large sample sizes, making them nationally representative. And this is uh, important uh, to know it's, it's, it's a very key uh, element that surveys that are made available are nationally representative. Most of these surveys are structured as repeated cross sections, which means the same or very similar questionnaire are used each time, but it's used or carried on uh, on a new sample of people, or at least not exactly the same uh, sample of people as the, the previous one. And this is a structure that helps survey to be um, repeated regularly and to provide consistent data over time. Next. Now, let's um, take an example of what type of data or the, uh, the format in which we get the data um, in this slide, which is an easy one to, to, to understand. Um, this is an example of micro data um, often made available from surveys. Now, microdata here means that the survey presents individual data. And the individuals may be persons, as in this case, but individuals also can be um, firms, uh, can be uh, households, and so on. In this case, these are individuals, persons. In each column here, uh, we have each column here uh, represent or correspond to a variable, and the answers are given in forms of categories. That's how. That's why you see uh, numbers. Now, if we look at column two, for example, column two is entitled R sex. This is the variable sex, and we can see that this variable has at least Two categories. Uh, category one is for male, category two for female. If we look at column three, age, uh, this is age groups. And category, I don't have all categories here, but I can see at least that category two corresponds to the 25, 44 age group. Category three, 45 to 54 age group and, and so on. The rows of these tables correspond to the answers given by each individual who took part in the survey. And in this example, the first row, for example, corresponds to uh, the responses of the first individual. And if we look closely, we can see that uh, for this first individual, Sex is category two, which is female. So this is a female age group, 25, uh, 44. We can see that the marital status is single, and we can look at um, uh, other information. If we look at row two, this is the second individual. Um, this individual uh, sex is one, category one, which is male. So it's a male, age category 45 to 54, marital st status, uh, married or cohabitating, and, and so on. And uh, we can look at all the variables and the information provided for the health, for example, both these two first ones, uh, the health is good. Um, we can look at their education level, below degree for both. We can look at their ethnicity and so on and so forth. So this is how data is provided. This, the first screenshot is, is, is mostly how you will see 
the information uh, provided in um, codes. So you see the numbers, those are codes. And in the second screenshot, we can see uh, what those numbers mean. Now, when you download data set, you will always have a dictionary that tells you what uh, each variable means exactly and what the categories um, of answers mean. So if you have one, two, three, four, five, you will know what one corresponds to, what answer uh, two mean, three, and so on. Um, next. Now, how to access the micro data two ways, either by downloading the data set or accessing them online uh, via Nistar. You can download the whole data set and the documentation that goes with the data set. And this can be done in various formats, such as SPSS, Stata, uh, Tab. And this will allow you a full access um, offline and you can carry uh, advanced analysis in your preferred software. Online, you can browse variables and meta data. You can perform single uh, data analysis. Uh, Nesta allows that. You can export tables and graphs directly. You can also, um, you, you can download, you have the option to, to download subset of data. And this is particularly useful when you're working with large data sets and uh, with some specific research needs. Uh, next key topics. Now, the data available through the UK Data Service enable to cover a wide range of key topics. Um, here we've listed six, but there are much more uh, than this. Um, you can, I'm thinking of poverty, topics like education, and I saw um, education uh, in some of your uh, interesting, uh, interested um, research uh, studies, politics, and so on. So let's talk about employment and work. Key data set here includes the labor force survey, the annual population survey, and the European working condition survey which are essential for understanding trends in the workforce. Uh, we can work on health as a key topic and health related data can be found in health survey for England, the Scottish health survey or various diet and nutrition surveys. We can um, address the key topic of family finances uh, the data set will be family resources survey and the living costs and food survey, which provide rich insight into financial well-being. Um, we can work on the crime and to explore crime statistics. We have the crime survey for England and Wales. We have the Scottish crime and justice survey. Um, now, I will not present all, all of them, all six. This is just an example to let you know what is available through the UK data service. So, Nadja, I will hand the mic over to you. Okay, so um, first of all, here's a quick question about what you know about the type of data we hold. So you can answer... Um, anywhere between none and five of these. Sorry, and I'll again set a timer for you to put your responses in. So we're back to Mentimeter again. Okay, so um, those responses are closed now. So a lot of people, the majority of people thought we used, looked at total daily expenditure, quite a lot for the surveyor report, number of sexual partners, um, a few for COVID-19 tests and one for blood samples. So let's just, um go on and have a look at what we do have so um 
We've got the Living Costs and Food Survey, which gives us information on expenditure and food. Um, the English Housing Survey has two parts. One is a part of a uh, look at residents. The other is a sample of houses and a housing stock check. Um, within the Health Survey for England and in ELSA, we've used um, biological samples, blood and saliva tests, and height and weight measurements. Um, there's a National Survey for Sexual Attitudes and Lifestyles, and um, specifically about um, COVID, there was a series of data from Understanding Society, and I'll talk a bit more about that study later on, that was run during the COVID waves every two or three months, or about seven waves of it. And it was really looking at a whole set of things around testing, vaccination, infection, um, impact on social employment, financial life, et cetera. Um, so as I said, just keep putting things into the Q&A if you have them. Okay, um, coming back to this, there's one, um, the response about the, the format data comes down in. Um, so somebody uses R, um, and there is a there is a package in R to download an SPSS file. Actually, um, I'll have to look at it online. But if you contact the help desk about that, we can help you. And I'll give that email out later on. So let's move on to some examples of surveys. So the first one I'm going to talk about is the British Social Attitudes Survey. So this runs every year. It's repeated cross-sectional. So as we said in the previous answer, you may get to answer it more than once, but there is no guarantee of that because it's all done um, in on a on a random sample basis based on address areas. And it tends to revisit similar topics over time, but there are clearly hot topics. So around the, the time of um, Brexit, there were a whole set of questions about attitudes. There are repeated questions about migration. Um, and it's run most years since 1983. So if you're interested in it, you can go onto the British Social Attitudes website, you search for it. There are reports from each year. The sample is around 3,000. There are a set of core questions just to, for background. And then there are a set of um, modules. So when you do the survey, you might be asked to do one or two modules rather than all four. So when you look at the responses, you have four sets of responses. Um, and one of the things they've asked about is gender equality. So going back to 1987, there was support for a traditional division of gender roles. That, as you might expect, it's declined over time. But where do you think it is in 2022? What do you think the rate is? And I'm just going to give you 30 seconds to put a dot on the cross there. Okay, so we have some quite optimistic people down on the left end, a real pessimist so I up near the top. Um, the correct answer is 9%. But that isn't the only question that's asked. So um, the other, another question that's asked is what proportion of women believe they did more than their fair share of household chores? And again, I'll give you 30 seconds to get this in. So the question is, are you a realistic bunch or are you pessimistic? The answer is you're probably a bit pessimistic, most of you, 63%, which is slightly less than I thought as well. So that was the uh, British Social Attitude Survey. It tends to get quite a lot of coverage in the news on its headline topic. It's kind of designed that way. Um, another one, and this is um, probably the one that gives us the most grief as a, as a um, support service because we get most queries about this. So it's the main source of data about the labour market. It looks at employment, unemployment, economic activity, um, and a whole load of related characteristics. So occupation training, hours of work, and household characteristics. It's run since 1992. It's carried out every um, quarter. There's around 60,000 people interviewed a quarter. And there are different data sets generated. So there's a quarterly individual and household data set. And then there's a longitudinal data set, which links um, five quarters. So the typical kind of, it operates as a panel in that 
you might be asked to take part. I think I was a few years ago, and you're then asked to ask questions, answer questions for five quarters, so they can generate um, that data set of change over a relatively short period of time. Um, and you can see different things going on in there, but that's uh, a useful and well used um, thing. And th again, this is based on random sampling. So the way that that's done, you can read more detail in the in the data set for each study. But generally, they would take a set of um, the postcode address sample file and then pick random members within that. And they might be clustered to enable those collecting the data to do it um, you know, sensibly. So rather than going to every local authority in the country, they might rotate around the different local authorities, but making sure there was some level of representation. I think underpinning this is the idea um, that statistical inference is depend, depends on the data being random. Um, there's a health survey for England. So this asks, a, a, again, a large range of questions, general health, long-standing illness, smoking and annual, um, and alcohol. It's run since 1991. At the moment, it's around 13,000 interviews a year. I kind of suspect that earlier it would have been more, and there was a period um, of the start of austerity where a lot of these surveys were kind of cut back a bit. Um, and they, there's also a question of physical me measurements and the analysis of blood samples. And you can see the infographic on the right that was generated from the 2018 survey. Um, and that's the source of it now. Now, this is a, a slightly different one that I wanted to introduce, not just uh, because I've been involved in it, but this comes from an ESRC study carried out by the Centre on the Dynamics of ethnicity um, in Manchester and St Andrews and other places. And it was a survey of ethnic minorities during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, if you're interested in ethnicity, this probably is a useful place to start to look um, because there are more than 14,000 responses and um, much better representation of some groups who typically aren't captured in the major surveys particularly we could say things about gypsies and travellers, which I don't think any of the national surveys can. Um, looking at health, well-being, financial security, employment, and experiences of racism. Um, you may, may remember a, um, a while ago that Diane Abbott um, was suspended from the Labour Party for her comments. Her comments were made in response to comments made about this survey. Um, which is unfortunate, really, but it is very powerful in terms of its experiences of racism and that analysis. Um, and the, the reason I've included it is to, to make the point here that the reason it's very difficult to sample uh, ethnic groups is because we use a probability-based approach, so we take a, a random approach. So when you look at surveys, they would tend to go into ethnic minority areas and choose those as a sample to boost. So understanding society has a boost, which it achieves by that method. <laughs> this survey was um, largely web-based. There was some face-to-face -face work. It was promoted through voluntary sector groups. Um, and then some very sophisticated statistical uh, techniques were used to make that nationally representative. So beyond the normal kind of weighting that we'll talk about in a bit. If you are interested, there's a link there to the free ebook which summarizes the findings from that. So, what I'm going to do now is just talk about the um, survey documentation. And I'm going to jump out of this in a minute to show you. So, I'm talking about understanding society. So, understanding society is a long running, longitudinal study of households and individuals. Typically, it runs every year. Um, um, picks up a so you can analyze change within individuals and households over a period of time. I mentioned before the um, I should have had the screen loaded. Um, I mentioned before the um, the COVID study. So we're going to take a look at that. So I'm going to take you through um, what happens when you go on to that website. 
Okay, so it goes on, and like all sites, asks you about cookie, cookies. So um, this is the front page of, of the data service. And the first thing you're encouraged to do is to search for data. Looking across the top, you, there's also a learning hub with lots of more materials um, and information about training and events. So I'm going to look up for understanding society. And what I will get is a series of um, different ones. So uh, fairly near the top come, comes the COVID-19 study. And if we look at that, we get on the front page uh, information about it. It's linked to the um, alternative title as the United Kingdom Household Longitudinal Study. And it's linked to a previous study, that the BHPS, that ran before 2012 when this started. Um, as you go down, you can see information, how to cite it, um, the topics covered, and an abstract, and, and quite a detailed abstract. And then it tells you um, when the fieldwork was conducted, um, the spatial units, the observation units, etc. So lots of information in there to help you um, understand it. And then within that, you also get um, a series of things. So there's the data archive data dictionaries, um, there's the original questionnaires. Um, and because this was carried out in waves, you've got the different questionnaires over time and the different data dictionaries. So those didn't stay the same because our concerns about COVID shifted along. Um, and then some of the documentation sent to participants. If you look in resources for some studies, you will find specific things. Um, so there you will have a link to other studies. Um, there's a teaching data set link with it. So there's a study guide for that. Um, so if you, when you look at this kind of information, when you when you pick a survey to look at, um, this is one of the important things to do. And I think one of the challenges with the things like the labor force survey is because it's so complicated, because there's so many versions of it, that documentation could be quite difficult. But with a study like Understanding Society or the cross-sectional studies, the guidance tends to be much more straightforward. And if we look here, you can see an example of the kind of questionnaire being asked. Okay, so um, so we take a survey and we want to make claims about the population. So you'll quite often see things like 24% um, of, pe of people think Keir Starmer is doing a bad job, um, whatever, some, some kind of statement. How do you make that statement from a survey of a few thousand people? Well, you do it by weighting that data to be representative of the population. So one of the things to understand about um, how a survey is weighted uh, for the more technical is what are the structural factors they use. So typically, um, we get a population in a survey and we compare that population to similar characteristics in the census to say how representative it is it. And we might use characteristics like sex, like age, like social class, um, in the case of evens, they used ethnicity, um, et cetera, et cetera. So we use the, series, the frame that we think we want this sample to represent and then generate weights because some of those responses will be um, under what you would expect and some will be over. Uh, within statistics packages, they're fairly easy to use. Um, if you do use them in Excel, then you would need to multiply the number, the count number by the weight factor. To, to make the data representative. And there should be full details about how weighting um, has been applied in each of the surveys. Um, Lucy, again, yes, I, as I said, I think you should, the description in the technical guidance should tell you how the weighting process was carried out and what was used. So the, the other thing to be aware of is um, that there are at different access levels. So. Um, from our point of view, we, we operate largely in the middle of this. So we produce some open access data sets. So there was an example there of the COVID teaching data set, um, which was developed 
by understanding society and is available with few restrictions. And the aim is it can be used in teaching. Uh, we've got one on the British Satellite um, British Youth Attitudes Survey, uh, British Social Attitudes. I'm trying to struggle with the initials. Um, probably more than one. I think there's some new ones going up. So there was one on politics and the environment, um, one on poverty, and I think there's a couple more going up. There's an Evans one, the e Equality one, um, etc. So if you if you're interested in teaching with data sets that you can use with a class. Um, then that's a good place to have a look at the open access teaching resources. And there's, there's a kind of link of that. You'll find that on our website. Um, and I think that there will be more information promoted about that. The bigger uh, advantage of that is you don't have to get students um, all to sign up to the UK data service. Um, the, the main level we use is safeguarded. So safeguarded data means you need to be registered with the data service and we give you a, um, an end user license um, there are some general conditions so you're not to share it etc but there may be some additional conditions which are imposed by the data owner so for example the um whatever they were called then department for communities and local government had restrictions on the english housing survey for a while um now, I'm not sure that whether those are still there, but as you go through and select you want to access the data, if there are any additional conditions, you'll be, um, ex they'll be explained to you. And finally, there's the kind of most secure data, and this is really controlled because of the risk of identification of individuals. Um, so in order to access control data, you need to be accredited. You need to go on a training course. Um, we call it safe researcher training and we run the course fairly regularly. Um, so you do the training and then you do a test and you become an accredited researcher for a period of five years, I think. Then to access the data you want, you need to put in an application. Um, those are looked over. There's a, there is a kind of public interest element to that looking over. Um, and then you access it in a physical or virtual secure environment, which means in effect um, you don't take things into it and you don't take things out of it without, without them going through a gatekeeper. So you post your syntax, uh, your code in. Um, it's, it runs on a virtual machine. Um, you produce the output you want and that's vetted to make sure it doesn't um, disclose anything. Um, so if you want to know more about that, then um, have a look at the website. Again, there's quite a lot of detail about that. Some examples, for example, when we looked at the COVID, the Understanding Society data, if you want to go down to geographic locations, and more set, that becomes more sensitive. So that's a control data set. Um, and that's true of most of the big surveys, that there's a control data set with typically more information that might enable individuals to be identified such as more detailed locations so that's kind of coming to the end just to say some useful things so first of all there's a drop-in session at 12 to 1 today so if you have specific questions about those are designed really if you have specific questions about a data set or, or formats and um, there will be staff sitting in and able to help you um, if you want to look more at the training events program, there's a link there. Um, for support materials, we have the learning hub. And for help and support, we run a help desk and we also have FAQ type pages. So if you go on there and post anything you want. Okay, so we'll hang around for a bit if you've got more questions. But thanks very much for attending and I hope you've um, learned something from this. As I say, think about the... Um, drop in center if you if you have specific questions and those will run regularly so if you haven't got them today have a look at the event site and you can um, hit them hit them when you're ready with your questions